Hello and uh, good evening, everybody. You're very welcome. My name is Brian Looney. I'm Head of Digital here with Kerry County Council. Uh, coming to you tonight from Killarney Town Hall. Uh, it's a dirty and wet evening out there, so our thoughts are far from, from cycling and on cycle, uh, cycle lanes. Um, but this is an opportunity uh, for uh, uh, people like myself who live in the town of Killarney and, and beyond the town uh, to learn a little bit about the proposals um, to develop some cycle lane infrastructure here in the town. Uh, and uh, David Doyle, the senior engineer, um, is going to walk us through those proposals. Um, we're going to be joined by the Cahirlock of the Killarney Municipal District, Councillor Brendan Cronin, who's going to say a few words of fault. Uh, we're going to have um, an opportunity to uh, raise some questions and take some questions from the public. Um, and we're also going to be joined by the Municipal District Manager, Angela McCallum, who will put the development uh, of these proposed cycle lanes in context of other developments that are happening uh, in the town. So hopefully you'll find the webinar to be engaging and of interest. Um, in my role as Head of Digital, I'm very, very keen that we would use this COVID opportunity that's presented itself uh, to learn a little bit about how we can improve the engagement that Kerry County Council has with members of the public and how we can use this uh, technology not only to increase the reach of these type of engagements, um, but also to improve the quality of the engagements uh, to make uh, towns like Killarney better for people to live in, uh, better for people to visit. So, you know, certainly public feedback helps to produce better policy. We all very much sign up to that belief. Um, so I hope you enjoy the webinar this evening. I'm going to run through a few uh, minor housekeeping um, matters. So first of all, for those who have joined uh, from, uh, from the public or from different stakeholders, uh, the only people who can be seen tonight are the presenters. They're the, uh, the organizers or the panelists. You won't be able to, to share your camera. We can't see your screen. Uh, in this webinar, attendees are muted. So that means you can't speak and we can't hear you. If you've got noise in the background, if the kids are doing their homework or the dog is barking, don't worry, we won't be able to hear any of that. Um, and you'll, be, you'll remain muted throughout. You do have the opportunity to ask questions. So you'll find a question pane in the GoToWebinar software. Uh, you can type in your question there. And later on in the Q&A section, I'll be acting as a moderator to take your questions uh, and I'll be passing them on primarily to David, uh, who will be the man with the answers this evening uh, in relation to both the process uh, that we're going through and also any uh, technical issues uh, or any questions you have in relation to the, the cycle lane development. Um, we love to keep a, a copy of all questions and that will feed into the, into the people who are uh, developing the proposals. So every question, uh, while it may not be asked, will certainly be looked at tonight. Uh, and I'll try to reduce any personal information. I won't be saying Mrs. Murphy from number 52, Lewis Road, wants to know uh, what's happening with. So I won't be passing on uh, the name of the person who asks the question, uh, again, uh, out of respect for, for the privacy of, of people who are contributing to the process. Um, in terms of the session being recorded, uh, we are going to record the session. Um, and again, if, it's, uh, if it passes a, a fairly simple quality uh, test, if it's not uh, beset with technical issues, uh, we would intend to share that, that information, as we've done with other public engagement webinars. Uh, because not everybody can join us at seven o'clock. There may be homework going on. People might be working. Uh, you know, we appreciate that, that families, uh, it's a busy time in the evening for people. Uh, so maybe you want to, to join later and that's fine too. We will be recording uh, the webinar and hopefully be able to, to view it then later on. Uh, we've already put substantial information, uh, both as handouts to this webinar uh, and also uh, on the Kerry County Council website in terms of what's being proposed. So with some webinars, we give people a copy of the slides that we share after the webinar. But in this case, actually, all the documentation in relation to the proposed cycle lane development and the Part 8 process that it's going through, they're available on Kerry County Council's website. Um, so I would encourage you to, to, to look there for, for any other documentation in relation to this proposal. Uh, and I suppose a big thing for me is that you give us some feedback in relation to the operation of these webinars. Uh, we're fairly new to public engagement by using webinar technology, so we're very much interested in getting people's feedback. Uh, we've run engagements in things like the county development plan uh, in relation to conservation grants uh, in, in recent weeks. Um, and certainly every time we run one, we get some good feedback that helps us make the next webinar a little bit better. 
Um, so certainly any feedback that you can provide to me, I'd be absolutely delighted to, to take it on board. Um, so again, developing proper meaningful consultation using technology is a key part of what will be in the county digital strategy. So the better uh, experiences we have during these COVID times, uh, that will shape the longer term post-COVID era in terms of how we do these kind of engagements. So without further ado, I'm going to pass you over to our first speaker tonight. Our first speaker is uh, the Cahirlock of the Killarney Municipal District. That's Councillor Brendan Cronin. So over to you, uh, Cahirlock. Thanks for everybody that's joining us. Um, I would like to welcome all our viewers and listeners uh, to this information webinar on the proposed new cycle paths for Killarney. Um, as everyone is well aware, we are in the midst of a pandemic which prevents us from having public consultation about projects in the normal way. Um, under normal circumstances, people would be able to come into our offices and our public buildings. Uh, they would be able to examine the plans and examine the drawings. But because of the necessity to have the restrictions that are upon us, we want to do all that we can to inform people about the project and how you can have your say. So this webinar is designed to give everyone as much information as possible about the five new cycle paths for the town and to advise everyone um, how you can have your say. Uh, I'm delighted, absolutely delighted to see that so many people registered and have joined us in the webinar. And while it's not the ideal and the normal way we do things, it is a very simple and useful way for people to engage. And I do hope everyone will find it informative. Uh, as Mayor Cahir Luck of Killarney, I consider these proposed cycle paths as a major project for our town. Probably one of the most important that will take place in the duration of this municipal district term. The enhancing of infrastructure for cyclists in Killarney in a town which attracts so many thousands of cyclists annually is so important to achieve. Uh, this is vital infrastructure for the town and I hope it will greatly add to the attractiveness for visitors and locals alike into the future. Uh, I also want to say that it has been and the request for cycle paths and cycleways has been on the agenda in our municipal districts uh, month in, month out over the years. So it's, this is a major step forward and hugely important. Also in tandem, and I know David will go into it in more detail when he, when he goes through the plans, it is important as well to, for the general public to recognise and to realise that uh, as part of the project, which uh, covers some 3,800 metres of pet proposed path, cycle pathways, there's also the plan to upgrade uh, the, a similar amount of adjoining footpaths to the, to the cycle lanes, which is hugely important. Um, I want to pay a tribute to David Doyle and to Mara McCallig and their team for bringing the process this far and I look forward to hearing what they have to say tonight. Um, I encourage everyone with an interest in these projects to listen carefully to what David has to say, to view the drawings and the plans which are available on the County Council website and to give your feedback and comments as soon as possible. And the critical thing is to make a submission uh, to the pro proposals uh, on or before Wednesday the 17th of February at 5 p.m. And the details I'm sure will be shared with us uh, later on by David. Um, so I look forward to hearing uh, David what he has to say and I'm sure you do too. And thank you for taking the time to join us and to listen. Thank you. Okay, David, I'm going to pass control to you if you want to go through your presentation. My, my screen up there, Brian. Uh, yeah, we can see that, David. That's great. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'd like, I would like, I'd like uh, the Mayor said, I'd like, I'd like to welcome everyone here this evening to this webinar on the Clarny Cycle Lanes Project. The purpose of the webinar is to provide an added opportunity to engage with the public consultation process for this project. As Brian and the Mayor outlined, the drawings are available on the Council website and we just put them on the windows of the Town Hall as well recently. The project involves four separate parts, which I'll outline with you there shortly. And as outlined already by Brian, you can submit your questions through this portal, and I will deal with these at the end of the presentation. 
this slide out outlines the planning approval process which Kerry County Council um, are, are following for this project. Uh, details of the project, first of all, were advertised in local media, um, and the, the process is set down as, as in section part eight of the Planning and Development Regulations 2001 to 2020. The townlands where the, where the projects are proposed are Ballycashin, Admanili, Kalani, Maitre, Bedrabeen, Archanavuli, Kilkuluk, Park, and El Avenue townlands. And the works uh, involved provision of site lanes at Rock Road, Upper Loose Road, Park Road, Deer Park Road, and the Grail Skull Road. This uh, screen just shows the locations of uh, these projects. So, again, on uh, Rock Road, Upper Loose Road, all the way along Park Road, commencing just east of the Friary Junction and stopping at the Daily Zone about at 822, along Deer Park Road as far as the Gale School Junction, along by the Gale School over to Killarney Sports and Leisure Centre. Kerry County Council has concluded that this proposed project, individually or in combination with other plans and projects, is not one which requires an appropriate assessment or an environmental impact assessment, and is not likely to have significant effects on the environment. And the other statements and the reports on the website again uh, summarises uh, that screening process that was carried out. Site notices were, uh, have been placed uh, along all the locations where the site lanes are, are, are proposed. And again, it just sets out the legislative background, the location of the town lanes, the short description of, of the proposed works. And it just sets out in again that where you can view the drawings on the council website. And very clearly, then that uh, again, as the Colleen like I said, submissions can be made uh, to roads at Kerry Code RAE or in writing to the administrative officer, Kerry County Council, Roads and Transport Transportation Department, uh, County Building Three. Again, submissions must be received or will be received up to 5 p.m. on Wednesday, the 17th of February. Active traveling infrastructure. I suppose this, as the mayor outlined, uh, this project uh, aims really to increase the allocation of road space for all road users. And we really want to provide far more cyclists and more walking infrastructure um, as opposed to the dominance really of the private car. Providing infrastructure that will support and encourage alternative modes of transport, dedicated walkways and cycleways, and cycleways will improve safety for all road users. Some of the carriage, road carriageways are being reduced, which will uh, assist with the, the traffic calming, and there will be streetscape and landscape improvements throughout the process. So it will reduce the dependency on the private car. It will improve safety for all vulnerable road users. The green linkages and cycleways from residential areas to the town centre and to schools forms a part of this project. That's about improving accessibility for all road users and reducing congestion. Again, active travel um, just really means it's about, it's about being physically active uh, in, in your everyday life, involving walking and cycling. And this project will provide, hopefully provide uh, further infrastructure to allow people to do that. The other key element is about providing linkages to schools to encourage more people to walk and cycle to school. So I suppose the benefits are environmental and health benefits, in, in, which involve you know, reduced carbon emissions, uh, reduced traffic noise, improve level of fitness with more healthy and active lifestyles. We have a more attractive town by, by expanding our walking and cycling tourism for all. And again, we'll be providing safe, safe access to our schools. Killarney is a compact town. Uh, and the chart here, um, just on the right hand side, is based on the census data. And while Killarney's core population is just over 14,500 people, uh, 12,600 um, of that population live within a 10 minute cycle of Killarney Town Centre. So, but that makes the town very, uh, make the town very accessible to cycling. In addition, we also, there are over 30 kilometers of cycleways in Kalani National Park. And this project will in enable a, a seamless transition between the town and the National Park. This site, I suppose, this site, this site in the projects form parts of an overall plan for the development of cycling in Kalani. A number of cycling projects have been successfully provided over the past number of years, including the Muckrush Road, to the top left, I provided cycle lanes up Rock Road recently, and a couple of years ago we provided cycleways from Mission Road back towards Fossa, all which led to, a, I suppose, a safer environment and an increased number of people cycling and walking to town. A couple of years ago, again, the elected members adopted the speed limit bylaws, which introduced 30 kilometre speed limits in all the all the states in charge of Kerry County, Kerry County Council throughout the county, including Killarney. In addition to that, we also included 30 kilometre speed limits in the town centre streets which will again will reduce traffic speeds and facilitate a safe environment for pedestrians and cyclists. 
The first site where, which is linking the Muckers Road to Ross Road, is currently under construction by, by Killarney Municipal District. And this will further extend the site network and linkages between the town and Killarney National Park. This map shows the locations of the existing cycleways. So, as I just mentioned, again, uh, about five, six years ago, we provided the one along Mission Road uh, down by the playground and back towards Fossa. The Muckers Road Safety Scheme went. Uh, Muckleshoot scheme went from again the woodland junction southward over uh, Flesbridge and connected in with the, 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 the path to lead to Muckers House and Grand National Park. And again, as I said, the Fles Cycleway is under construction linking the Muckleshoot to Ross Road. As I said earlier, this project is part of an overall cycling strategy for the town, uh, primarily, first of all, with a focus on the main approach roads. The roundabouts and the bypass will be dealt with separately uh, as a separate uh, project to this. And these include Belly Downey, Cleany, the Loose Road Junction, uh, the Canary Sports and Nervous Centre Junction, and Daly's Roundabout. So a, a separate project is currently ongoing, looking at enhancing uh, the, the, uh, the, the existing pedestrian and cycling facilities at these junctions. In addition to that, uh, the, the link between the Woodlawn Junction and Kinmare Place is part of a, a TI funded safety scheme. And again, that's an advanced stage. Uh, hopefully, the plans will be de published later this year for that, that scheme. And um, finally, I suppose there are a number of secular routes, um, which uh, hopefully will follow this process if we're successful to, to bring these uh, through the planning process and secure the funding to get, to get these uh, site lanes, which are on the main approaches, in place. Just, this map shows an, uh, um, an overall aerial view of the town. And again, I suppose a key element of this, while it was on the mayor arterial routes coming to the town, we also wanted to connect, connect with as much uh, of the residential properties as possible, both along the park road area and in the north of the town. As I mentioned on the second, the other screen as well there is we are doing a public realm plan for Kalai Town Centre, and that, that process is, is commencing. So that will be dealing with all the footpaths uh, and the Kalai alluded to it, in the town centre. So we would hope that as part of that project, that more pedestrian and cycling facilities will be provided through the town centre streets, which again, then these main um, arteries of cycling will connect in with. So the cycling project, I suppose, is broken down to four parts. There's Rock Road, Upper Loose Road, Park Road, and Deer Park Road. And in the last part of Deer Park Road is the Chestnut Drive section from the Deer Park Road junction to Clarny Sports and Leisure Centre. So commencing first, they've all at Rock Road, Again, this project uh, will commence just uh, at the existing, uh, well, the existing cycleway and footpath going up to Rockwell Car Park in it, and will continue northward to south of Cleany Roundabout. It will involve the, re the reduction of the carriageway width to 6.5 metres, and it will, will involve the provision of two segregated cycle lanes on both sides of the road. Look at the photo montage here and at the bottom left again. This is allowed by Sister uh, Stephen Compliance home side. Again, this is the footpath will remain. There'll be a 1.8 metre dedicated segregated cycleway. There'll be a grass verge uh, delineating the cycleway from the carriageway. The carriageway width is being reduced to 6.5 metres. On the northern side, as you come down to town, there will be a curb uh, and a level difference between the carriageway and the proposed cycleway. And then the existing footpath will remain. Um, so I'll just go through in detail now to the next slides on, on that project or on that part. So, first of all, just uh, Commencing again at the Cleany uh, roundabout side again, so you can see there on the drawings which are on display, showing the dedicated cycleways heading north, south, uh, along Rock Road. Uh, just a few key points to point out. A cycleway uh, will cross over junctions, the cyclists will have the right of way. So again, there will be a level difference here um, between the carriageway and the cycleway, and again, there will be a further level difference between the cycleway and the footpath. So the footpaths and the cycleways will be segregated very clearly and segregated from, from the public road as well. Um, the existing uncontrolled crossing just south of the Apple Green service station will be upgraded to a controlled crossing. Moving we'll on to the next slide here again, cycleways continue north south, uh, again with the, uh, the green uh, division between the cycleway and the St. Columbus side with the carriageway. Again, the cycleways will pass through the existing bus stops and the green bridge will be maintained all the way there. At this junction of Sister Joseph Road, again, cyclists will have right away through that junction and they will go through at, at, at a level axis. So vehicles, Coming to Sister Joseph Road will just rise up slightly, cross the footpath and cycleway, and go back down again to the carriageway. The cycleway on the northern side will continue in towards town beside the footpath, again 1.8 metre wide. Uh, then, as you just come down into the grotto, the cross section of, of the road at the grotto um, is a limiting factor here. 
and for about a distance of about 35 metres, we will have a combined footpath cycleway for that section of the cycleway and footpath just immediately north of the existing pedestrian crossing. Uh, again, just when you go, uh, when it widens out again, we will segregate the footpath and cycleway. Again, that, that crossing will be upgraded to a two-can crossing to, the side, to avoid for cyclists to cross the road. Cycleway on the southern side, then we'll continue to link in with the existing cycleway, which links with Rock Road. And on the northern side, the cycleway will then merge into the carriageway of Rock Road. Rock Road Safety Scheme was approved by the elected members uh, last year and uh, will, 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 be, will be provided shortly, which will facilitate cyclists to cycle with the carriageway along that section of Rock Road. Just regarding the High Street Junction again, just the, the traffic lights at High Street Junction will be upgraded to provide to provide cyclist crossings and all on all the, the approaches. We're going to part two, which is Upper Loose Road. Uh, this forms two sections. This section, first of all, from the Ends Road Junction up to the entrance to Dolphins Avenue, where there will be a cycle way uh, on the left hand side of that road, and from Dalton's from Dalton's Avenue uh, up to south of Bridgefield. There would be two-way cycleway along by the Fitzgerald Stadium site. So just and, and the photo montage again, the footpath on the right hand side will remain. And um, there's the footpath, the roadway will be reduced to six meters in width. There'll be 3.3 meter two-way cycleway on that section of the road. And this photo montage is just along by the Fitzgerald Stadium. The, 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 the footpath will remain, but there will be further setback of the boundary wall there. And that's what's proposed in this project along by the Fitzgerald Stadium. So just going into a bit more detail, starting again from south of Bridgefield, there will be control crossing linking the, 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 the north-south uh, two-way cycleway on the left-hand side, just to allow cyclists to cross the road safely. And again, that two-way cycleway will, will run north-south on the left-hand side all the way along up a loose road. So just on the, the Google map extract here, it'll be on this side of the road here, and it will involve sitting back the boundary along that section of loose road. Moving further south, again, as you can see, the cycleway and the drawings here shows two way cycleway, 3.3 meters wide, running along um, or south along uh, Upper Loose Road. And I suppose, again, like Rock Road, again, there will be a level there. Um, just anyone who crosses from, uh, the, the cycleway from the carriageway, there will be a level difference as you cross the cycleway, and again, a level difference across the footpath. As you come down into Dallas Avenue Junction, again, the two way cycleway is shown as I shown there on the cluster along by the Fitzgerald Stadium and along by the properties there leading to the Dallas Avenue Junction. At Dalton's Avenue, um, again, as I said earlier, we have the housing estates with 30 km speed limits. Um, Cyclists will have the right to, to, to cross the road and, and merge in with, with, with the traffic uh, heading southward on Loose Road. They'll also have the option of coming through Dalton's Avenue and coming down to High Street Junction through a quiet residential area. Moving on to part three. Again, this um, project involves a cycleway on both sides of the road, all the way from the Friday, just east of the Friday Junction, to just before Dinny's Road, over on Park Road. As you all know, Park Road is a main arterial road for traffic coming to the town centre. So starting at the Friday Junction, again on the northern side, the cycleway lane will just come in uh, just beyond the Friday Church, and it will be a 1.8 metre cycleway beside the existing footpath and running eastwards towards Daly's. The site lane come into town again will be beside the will be beside the footpath, but we'll just continue on around the around the edge of that junction as far as the pedestrian crossing. Uh, that's the crossing between the outlet centre and Canary Courthouse. We'll be out in the long park road, and again the cycleway is on both sides of the road just before you come to the, the railway bridge. Due to the limit cross section as well as at the railway bridge, the cyclist lane on the, on the as you go to town on the northern approach will merge into the traffic to cycle through the bridge. And then we'll join the segregated cycleway beyond the bridge. As you come into town, um, we have, I suppose, the proposal is that there, there will be a four meter wide dedicated cycle lane which will take you off road in under the underbridge that it currently exists on the railway line. And you come into the outlets in the car park where you'll be led back out to join the carriageway again on the town side of the train bridge. Um, slide. So then just at the just beyond the train bridge again, um, at the moment the cinema site, the new Canary Omniplex is under construction. And as part of that development, they have a planning approval in place to provide the traffic light junction uh, right opposite the McDonald Junction there, as shown this in the proposal. And again, we're just going to ensure that the facilities for cycling for cyclists and the cycle lanes will be provided as part of this new traffic light junction. Again, there are extracts from the National Cycling Manual. Uh, which we will be insisting on that again the dedicated site will, will be lined and marked right through that junction. 
again, as we as we move further eastward, again, as you head over town, the proposal is, is the south lane, then will veer into the green area behind the trees in front of Ashanaburi. As you go to town, as you come into town, the south lane will follow the, the existing footpath along that section of Park Road. So again, just focusing again there. So as I said, as you go to town, the south lane will go behind the line of trees here. That's what's proposed um, in the drawings along the green area in front of Ashanaburi, and it will, it will rejoin the carriageway again just beyond the Ashanaburi entrance. As you come into town, again, the site lane will follow the existing foot, footpath line along Park Road uh, leading into the town. And again, just on the cross section, again, there you see again, the existing footpath on the cinema side, the, the, the proposed site lane, 6.5 meter carriage with the footpath, and then the raised area where you go behind the tree lines, the tree line boulevard here along our channel where we're proposing this two meter site lane for cyclists heading out of town. So the next big obstacle that you come to here is the Countess Road, Deer Park Road, Park Road Junction. This is a very busy junction, uh, obviously with the main artery coming to town and with the spurs up towards the, the shopping centres and Tesco's and then down to Countess Road. So because of that, our proposal here is, is to, that cyclists will divert slightly off the road. So that is, if you approach this junction coming from town, you will divert up behind the pump house on Deer Park Road. And you will cross in the, the, the re revised location of the pedestrian crossing at that location to allow pedestrian cyclists cross the road. You will then join a minimum width of a three meter wide combined footpath cycleway along by the front of the shops here, where you'll be led back onto the carriage bay again, heading eastward on Park Road. Similarly, coming into town, again, the site, as a cyclist, you'll be diverted slightly on, on, onto Countess Road, crossing the control crossing, and you come back out here where you'll join the carriage bay, come back into the town centre. Again, this is I suppose, primarily due to the significant amount of traffic currently used at that junction. As you, the section then from um, that junction to Daly's, again, just the road cross section narrows ever so slightly. Uh, so while we are proposing to reduce the crash to 6.5 metres, there will be segregated side lanes beside the roadway, 1.6 metres wide on both sides. And because we're below the 1.8 metre width, as I advised in the National Cycle Manual, there will be a bothered kind of curb detail running along between the, the carriageway, the edge of the carriageway and the cycle lane to really to, to, to give the cycleway or the cyclists a, a kind of a, a break from the traffic on the carriageway. Again, the existing footpaths will remain as is. Um, however, obviously as part of this project, where we're adding the cycle lanes beside the footpaths, the entire footpaths and cycle lanes will be upgraded. So again, the cycle lanes will run on both sides of Park Road. Uh, west east for heading along Park Road uh, for that section of, of, of Park Road. As we move out further along Park Road past the church of the intersection, again on the northern side, the cycleway will continue uh, parallel to the curb line. But as you come into town, there are a number of oak trees here along by Park Lodge. And the idea is that the cycleway will, 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 will go, just go off road uh, on the stadium side of them trees and um, come into the, the green area in front of Park Lodge and will rejoin the carriage wagon immediately beyond on the town side of Park Lodge. So again, just moving out there again, you'll see uh, this is the area in front of Park Lodge. Again, the cycleway as you come into town will join the existing combined cycleway along by Hotel Kalani on the southern side. And on the northern side, the cycleway will run again parallel to the curb. So on the northern side, it runs here along parallel to the curb. And on the southern side, it will join with that existing uh, shared surface cycle space along by Hotel Kalani. Um, the cycleway then will just in just before the roundabout at Daly's. And the existing uncontrolled crossing just this location will be upgraded to a controlled crossing. As I said earlier, again, the roundabout itself, similar to the roundabout Cleany, these are, will be part of a separate uh, project for which to look at, at enhancing the existing uh, pedestrian and cycling facility crossings on, on, this, on, this, on this section of the N22 at Davies. Again, just a photo montage there shows really what's proposed between the, 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 the kind of curb, curb bollard detail between the cycleway and the carriageway. So outlining there, just that's, that's what the proposal is for this section of Park Road. Moving on to part four then, which is the proposal to have site lanes again, segregated site lanes again on both sides of Deer, Deer Park Road, heading north from the, the Hagerty Junction up as far as the Vale Skull Road Junction. And again, site lanes again will go on the, both sides of the, of the Vale Skull Road over as far as the playground. At the playground, uh, there will be a controlled crossing. Um, and on the southern side, which is along by the Pinewood side, there'll be a two-way, four-meter wide cycleway running all the way over to Canary Sports and Leisure Centre. And again, like the other proposals, uh, we have a spur linking back to Pinewood uh, development. Again, just to encourage the people why would it, uh, to allow them to get onto this site network um, at that location there. 
So I'll just go into a bit more to the detail of that. Again, the plans here, you can see the south lanes on both sides of Deer Park Road heading north-south. And again, the south, is, um, south lanes, uh, as they cross any of the junctions, south is going to right away. And then even crossing that, there will be a level difference between the cardway and the south lane as you can put it out of any entrances or any shopping, shopping areas. So heading heading for the north again, and again the cyclists run on both sides of the road. Again, cyclists have a right of way through the junctions, and again the cyclists will have the option to turn on the Chestnut Drive. Um, again, the the cardway will, will be reduced to 6.5 meters, uh, with varying with the footpaths uh, on the lower side of um, the Deer Park Road. There are wider footpaths, but again we we uh, we'll have a footpath on most sides on most parts, with the exception of the piece of just north of Tesco. But there's no footpath at the moment, and the site then will be just proposed there between the wall and the, the edge of the cartway. In the, the existing entrance here as well from Deer Park Lodge, um, that's the entrance to that property, is supposed to relocate at the back, and I'll show that on the, on the next slide. So, again, that's the, the revised entrance to Deer Park Lodge. So, we'll be taking away totally from the junction of the Glasgow Road and Deer Park Road with a new proposed junction as shown there in the drawing. Again, you can see the site lanes on both sides of the road leading over as far as the, the playground entrance. And again, as you cross the entrances to uh, housing developments, site is again will have right away. Again, this, this control crossing will facilitate if you're a cycling school in the morning on the, the left hand side, they can cycle now into school, they come out in the evening, they'll cross the control crossing and cycle back to Deer Park Road. Or they'll, they'll have the option to go on the two way cycleway south of the uh, south east road on the Pinewood side. Leading all the way over to Killarney Sports and Leisure Centre. Uh, so they're just the, the cross sections again at that point. Uh, so as, as you move over along, again, the site where just uh, be, beyond uh, the playground will run on this side of the, the carriageway, which is the primary side, two way site where over as far as Killarney Sports and Leisure Centre. And again, you can see it there on the drawing, and we've made provision for the two way site where to continue down to link with Pinewood Estate. So then at the, at the end of this section, Site where we'll go over again on the southern side there, along by there, and we'll join over with Canary Sports and Leisure Centre, providing, um, I suppose, a full time access to the Leisure Centre for the Deer Park area. So, I suppose, just, just to recap again, this project involves the site lanes on the main arterial roads and Upper Rock Road, extending the existing site lane northward to King Roundabout. The site lanes again from the Ends Road Junction, Loose Road Junction, northward, uh, just to south of Bridgeville Development. But a full extent of Park Road from the eastern side of Ferrari Church, just to the western side of the Roundabout of Dailies, along Deer Park Road as far as the Galeskill Road Junction, along by the Galeskill, uh, over to Killarney Sports and Leisure Centre. So submissions, again, as I said, start I'll just recap again. Uh, submissions um, and observations uh, should be just labelled the Part 8 Killarney Cycleways. It can be sent in writing to the Administrative Officer, Kerry County Council, Roads and Transportation Department, Room 115, uh, County Building Strilly. They can also be emailed to roads at kerrycoho.ie. Submissions and observations must be received by 5 p.m. on Wednesday, 17 February 2021. All submissions, as outlined by the Coherlock, will be considered, and a report on all submissions will be presented to a meeting of Killarney Municipal District. Again, as Brian and the Mayor outlined, the drawings are available on, on, on the Council website. Um, and if you require any further clarification, uh, I am, am available uh, by appointment. If, if somebody wants to ring the, the, the Roads Department in Tralee, I will get back to them and arrange the appointment to discuss any aspect of this proposal with, uh, regarding their own property or regarding any issue they have uh, over the next few weeks, up to um, including the 17th of February. So uh, that's the end of the presentation at the moment. And what I'm going to ask Brian now is, is to come back in and just we might just put to me some of the questions that you've raised, and I will try to answer them to my best of my ability. David, thank you very much for that uh, comprehensive uh, presentation. As somebody who lives in Killarney, uh, it's it's hugely advantageous to hear and have navigated. Um, an arranged version of what we can see on the map. So I, I found it myself personally very useful to get that, that level of detail on your walkthrough. So thank you very much uh, on my own behalf. Uh, there has been some some very significant uh, engagements with the public. There's been um, uh, over 120 people in, in attendance uh, and there has been a number of questions that have been raised. And I'll try and take them as best I can in terms of chronological order, but also in terms of maybe where there's some questions that are linking around a similar 
topic, uh, if that's okay. So the first question we got in was in relation to some of the developments uh, of, of, of the new infrastructure on Park Road might uh, prov uh, present a problem for people who have commercial premises that require uh, rigid or articulated truck deliveries. Um, and that they could be inhibited by the development of raised curbs and bollards. Um, I, I, I presume that you have some, um, you're building in some design uh, parameters around that type of premises. Yeah, Brian, just on that issue, I suppose uh, that we have both in cycle lanes on both sides of Park Road. Uh, I'm aware there's a number of businesses on that section of road, and uh, we will make sure, uh, again, and we will liaise with the businesses before we put any of the bollards in place. To make sure, make sure that we will not hinder any uh, access or, or entry points to our businesses. Um, so, um, again, just we've shown, I suppose, maybe I've just gone through briefly on, the, on the, 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 the screen shots there, okay, but we will liaise with every single business there before we put in the ballots in place there. It is important, though, that, to point out, I suppose, that section of Park Road between Hegarty's and Daly's, the cross section of the road does, it does narrow in slightly, and we have to reduce the, the cycleway width to, to 1.6 metres. And that is why we do need uh, some sort of a, a barrier, kind of bother detail between the actual site route, the cycleway and the carriageway. So that's a detail that's in the National Cycling Manual. And we have to make, I suppose, it's, it's all about making provision uh, or making road infrastructure safe for all road users. But we will definitely engage with all the businesses and we will make sure that we will not prevent uh, any business from having, making deliveries to their business. Okay, very good. The, uh, there's a couple of, uh, of uh, very positive uh, pieces of feedback as well coming in on the questions panel, but I, I'll try and stick to the questions if that's okay with people. Uh, there is one here that's uh, an observation um, around the fact that on the upper part of Park Road, that's between if you like, the Tesco roundabout uh, and the Daly's roundabout, uh, the person making the observation says that there's 45 entrances on the left-hand side of the road as opposed to only seven entrances on the right-hand side. And would it not make more sense to have a two-way cycle lane on on the church side of, of Park Road? Um, is that something that can be considered, David? Yeah, absolutely, Brian. That can be considered, and the person who put up that question obviously can make a submission to that point. Um, again, uh, I take the point that um, there are the vast majority of interests are on the left-hand side, and we have the cycle lane on both sides of that road. Um, now, if we put, you know, again, we we'll consider the submission, uh, and we don't have not considered it, but just I suppose if we do put the two-way cycleways on the, the left-hand side of the road as you come in, we are reducing the cars down to six and a half metres, and it will, it will involve pushing the traffic, I suppose, to the, uh, the left-hand side of the road as you go out. So, um, at the moment, I suppose, the park road is, is a relatively wide enough section of the road, but it will move the traffic closer to the, the existing footpaths and the existing businesses. So while you might be solving one problem with the cyclists, you might be creating a bigger issue, particularly if you have a lot of businesses uh, entering and exiting from there, are, are people visiting, coming to the business there, entering and exiting onto the road with there. You know, by putting the cyclists, the two-way cyclists on the right-hand side, as you go to Park Road, it will, puff, it will move the traffic that bit closer to the, the business entrance. So again, so a mission can be made with it. It will be considered with our consultants, uh, Maliki Washington Partners, who have done the detailed detail design of the scheme. And if we can make amendments to our design, we will definitely consider it as part of the, this process. Okay, thank you, David. Another uh, question or an observation from somebody who's, who's lived overseas uh, and has observed problems of vehicles parking or otherwise impeding cyclists on cycle lane infrastructure. Uh, obviously, we saw in your walkthrough there, there are some provisions for things like bollards on some sections uh, of the cycle lane and in other, other uh, elements of some of the routes. The cycle lane is fully separate from the from the road road carriageway, and um, but how will the whole matter of the segregation um, um, apply to the, the schemes that have been uh, uh, designed so far? Yeah, I suppose on the rock road one, as you look rock road, we will have a green verge between the between the, you know, the carriageway and the cycleway, so that should prevent people from pulling in there. Okay, um, look, this part is, is about sharing road space with everybody. And to make provision for vulnerable road users, cyclists, pedestrians, as well as people using their cars. And um, look, you know, well, I appreciate sometimes that there's, there's issues with parking and things in Kalani, but people will have to respect that the footpaths are, are for footpaths for walking on, the cycleways are for people to cycle on, and car parks and on street parking is for parking on. And it's just not acceptable for people to park on footpaths. Um, obviously, look, when we build it, we will make every effort to, to, to disencourage this from happening. Again, the bollards will, in some cases, will prevent it. But, um, you know, and we have, you know, Kerry County Council and Gardaí kind of have enforcement powers to, to enforce this. 
But we, we would really appreciate, I suppose, appreciate and it's appeal to the public generally here is it's about sharing road space for everybody. Everybody has a right to use the road, be it a cyclist, a pedestrian, or a car user, or a business owner, whoever. But we, we have to respect everyone else who's using the public road, and everyone deserves the opportunity to use the section road that's designated for them. So this project is about designating a dedicated, segregated site lanes on these major port roads, and it'd be, I suppose, to make it be effective to walk people, we'll have to respect that. And it's all about respecting all other road users as well. Okay, there's a question that's come in here that's, uh, I suppose, of a pragmatic nature as well, uh, David, for, for users. And certainly would have seen this as, a, as a, an occasional cyclist myself, uh, both as a commuter and, and a, as a leisure cyclist. Um, it, the issue of how do we keep these uh, bike lanes free of grit and debris? Yeah, that's an issue that has, has, has come up and I know it's been raised a good few times in the past and look, it's back down to a maintenance issue. No, um, I will have to see in Kalani if we provide the site network as is uh, linking with the existing site lanes we already provided. Um, uh, let's see, there will, there will be a specific requirement to provide a, a small narrow sweeper that can actually sweep these, these site lanes. It will be critically important that these are maintained at high standards if we want people to use these site lanes. And uh, at times, particularly due to design issues or whatever, that grit or there could be water or faulty um, section of pavement, these will have to be addressed. And uh, just regarding the cleaning of them, they will have to be, it will have to form part of the municipal district's clean program uh, with especially a small narrow machine that will actually, that we can drive these, these, these cycleways on a weekly or bi weekly basis to make sure they're maintained to the high standards. Very good, thank you. Uh, a question again around some of the terminology. And, and uh, again, I have to give you a lot of credit, David, for breaking things down into into layman's language uh, that the likes of me can understand so but one, one person has asked a question that i was curious about myself uh, what is a token crossing a token crossing is a controlled pedestrian crossing that has also a, a, a cycling crossing facility as well um we generally wouldn't have too many of them in Kerry and um, primarily in the cities okay but as we're putting cycle lanes we're going to get more people cycling there will be specific phases for cyclists to cross the road as well as pedestrians so that's what a token crossing is very good, thank you. Um, there's a couple of questions that are related to a similar theme, uh, David, and I'm going to try and maybe wrap them up into a, a single question. Uh, and it's really around uh, the priorities and junctions. So while there is some very positive feedback in relation to the, 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 the scope of the project or the potential of the project to transform Clarity and to really make it a bike-friendly town for commuter users and for tourists alike, um, that the, there, there is an issue of prioritisation uh, on junctions, and there's an observation here uh, where somebody's asking, you know, can the uh, prioritisation at entry and exit points and at junctions uh, be considered uh, so that the cyclist has effectively a, a continuity on their journey? Um, and also, can those junctions be looked at from the point of view of the speed of the vehicles that are approaching them? Um, so that, again, if a cyclist is coming onto a junction, uh, that the vehicles moving towards them may be coming at a slightly lower speed than they otherwise uh, might be. Okay. Well, I think so, I suppose primarily on this project, the vast majority of the junctions onto the, the network, I showed on, on, on Upper Loose Road and on a Rock Road, um, you know, the cyclists will have right away to the vast majority of the junctions. So when you go to Park Road, the new traffic lights proposed at the cinema junction, there will be cycling phases again there, and again, there will be dedicated cycle lanes, and, and cycle lanes clearly mapped through that junction. You come to the, the one at the, the Countess Road, Deer Park Road Junction, that's a very busy traffic road. And I suppose because you, because of the sheer volume of traffic uh, at, at that junction, and it is a tight enough roundabout. We, you know, from in consultation with our designers, we chose to kind of divert the site, the site slightly onto Countess Road and onto Deer Park Road, purely because if we put the cyclists through that junction and give, give the cyclists full priority, well, as it stands at the moment, it will create to a significant queuing on, on, on the major approaches, really, on the Park Road approach, eastbound and westbound, and then the Deer Park Road. And it was for that reason, I suppose, it's why we, we, we went for the design. We went for it, okay. Again, look, if submissions can be made on that, we will reconsider it again. But um, I suppose it's just that junction in particular and Park Road itself, they are main arteries in the town. A lot of significant traffic comes in there. So it's about balancing the demand for safer cyclists, and we have a capacity issue, issue with junctions. With all the cycleways, we are reducing the causeway down to 6.5 metres. Um, and, and some sections of Park Road and Rock Road and Upper Loose Road are very wide, which encourage higher speed. So mm -hmm. that, that effect alone uh, has proven before and has been very effective to slowing, slowing traffic down. 
Um, maybe then with, I know on Rock Road again we're going to have some landscaping and trees. Again, they all add to the kind of you know the, kind of the feature that you're making. You're going into, into a narrow section and will force people to slow down. Um, but again, I suppose just with Park Road, it is a main artery into the town. A lot of heavy goods vehicles come in there as well. So again, I suppose we're trying to balance the, the amount of road space available, and we take into account the traffic volumes on these roads as, as these exist at the moment. Uh, I would say maybe over time, if a lot more people start cycling and I know there are proposals again for auto bypasses and uh, even some of the uh, link roads uh, linking from um, Loose Road down to the town, uh, that we may well come back and look at that, that heavy junction again with a view to make it more uh, site, uh, more site pedestrian friendly. But I suppose at the moment, with the, with the current traffic volumes, we are trying to balance the need, need for all road users here. Very good. Yeah, there, there's a related question here or a recommendation that, uh, again, around uh, controlling vehicular speed, that reducing the lanes to a minimum of 2.75 metres per lane would help significantly to reduce vehicle speed, uh, while also making for wider footpaths uh, and verges and kind of a better ambience in the area. So, again, I, I presume that's kind of maybe the gold standard, uh, but you have to be practical in relation to the types of traffic that are using some of these roads that you just outlined. So, I, th I think you have answered that and certainly we'll take that uh, recommendation on board, but I'm sure you're familiar with the uh, the, the recommendations around that and you, and you have described it just well in your previous answer. So I'll move on to another question. Um, there is, a, I suppose, a, a, a number of questions that relate to, I suppose, the big picture. Uh, and I use that, that terminology. So, for example, uh, there's somebody on here from uh, Clarity Cycling Club saying they very much welcome the proposed developments uh, and their members and their families uh, and the wider community would, would certainly be encouraged to uh, take up not just commuter cycling, but, but sport cycling possibly as the facilities develop. Um, but what they're looking really for is, is there an overall strategy that will effectively provide a, an, an outline as to how cycle lanes across the whole of the town will be developed? And there's a couple of other questions very much on the same vein in relation to dealing with some of the legacy cycle lanes and the issues uh, arising from those, uh, and also in relation to extension of, for example, the, um, is it the, um, the Rock Road uh, cycle infrastructure bringing it to the north part of the town and the new developments there around Bally Trabine. Um, so uh, I suppose, is there a process by which a kind of a cycling route master plan is being developed? Yeah, I, I had one slide there, Brian, who I suppose was the one referring to the overall kind of cycling strategy for the town, okay? And I suppose this project is part of a, a, a bigger plan for the town. I'm going to just try to flick back to that slide again, if I can just put it up there. That'd be great, Chad, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, just maybe I would stick with this map again. I suppose what we're saying here is we are doing cycle lanes on the main approach roads. All these, the round of what's pretty on the bypass, uh, they are being examined separately, and that is an ongoing process that has come into us very recently with a view to providing uh, enhanced facilities for pedestrians and cyclists to cross the bypass. Um, I suppose the, you know, the entry 2 bypass in Kalani has been a bone in the town for years with respect to development plans and everything else. But uh, you know, as you can see in the map there, there are a number of housing developments north of that, uh, uh, north of that road. So really what we're saying in this phase here is, is the, you know, bringing the, these main uh, cycling lanes along these main roads to, the, to, to these key junctions. Uh, once we come up with a, a, an improved improvement plan for these junctions and go through the statutory process like we do for these cycling lanes, we will then look at, I suppose, uh, cycle lanes again north of these areas to try to connect um, these, some of these residential areas with, with, with the town. And I know for a fact, uh, and look has raised this in, in the MD very, uh, over the last number of years again, that there is a specific plan being dealt with regarding the loose road again, because you know, I know the Legion and Cokes uh, are Legion and pitched pitch up here north of the bypass and to provide, uh, <clears throat> I suppose, a safe crossing of Canary Bypass. That is being examined at the moment uh, with a view to developing a proposal for that, for that location as well. Um, I suppose tiny with there is the cycling is the town centre works again. Um, that project has has is, is being kicked off, and all the town centre streets will be examined with a view to making them you know pedestrian and cycle friendly. And I would hope that they will link in with all our proposed cycleways here on the main approach roads. Similarly, again the safety scheme and Buckle Road again that will be going through a separate statutory process. So. Um, as well, these are the main arteries. We have, I did mention as well there will be a secondary process looking like the likes of Woodlawn Road and Rookie Road and maybe Margaret's Road and Upper Park Road. But I think before we go too far along, we have to get the main arteries done here. And this, this project is primarily about 
getting sighted in along the main arteries into the town. And we will further then look at extending that further to linking with the more other residential areas in the town. So um, maybe we should be looking at maybe a bit more detail, a, a more, more detailed strategy of how, how we link up with every single development in the town. But I suppose this part is about the main arteries feeding into Canada Town. I think they're critical to matter what we do. Um, so if we can get this in place, uh, there is definitely potential to, to further roll this cycling network out, uh, not only to the, the town centre, but also these outlying or some of the states along the same counties and woodland. And again, a key element of all this plan is, is about linking the town with the National Park. Um, so look, I think that's 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 the view on that at the moment, right? Okay, very good. Uh, and again, I suppose that there, there are people making uh, comparisons with some of the the existing cycleways in terms of the way they were designed. Um, you know, uh, there's certainly a new uh, national cycling manual um, that that road design engineers are, are using, and it's referenced actually in some of these questions that are here. Uh, somebody's asked, are they, can the junctions be modified in line with the national cycling manual? Now, I did hear you in in the commentary uh, talking about uh, one particular junction. Uh, where you brought that language into, into play. So, yeah, can you just tell us a little bit about the National Cycling Manual uh, and how it's being applied to this scheme? Yeah, well, the, national, the, the details in the National Cycling Manual will, will, will be applied to, to this scheme. So, all the, the junctions I mentioned about up on, on Rock Road and up on Loose Road and along, primarily along Park Road, the junctions will be designed and constructed within standards. And I suppose the only one, um, just the, the, the junction at, at the Higley Junction, because of the traffic volumes there, we are just deviating slightly where the cyclists are being diverted slightly onto, onto uh, the Countess Road and onto Deer Park Road. Uh, but everywhere else, uh, we will be compliant fully with all of the, the applicable standards regarding the accessible crossings, the two current crossings, and the, the entrances where cyclists will have, will have right away uh, through all the junctions in, in, in the town, as I outlined earlier. Very good. Uh, there's a question in relation to the position of the bollards on section EE, that was one of the maps that you, you showed us on, uh, of Park Road. Um, I, and obviously, um, there is some markup on the maps. Uh, I've seen this myself, but you might just confirm that the position of the bollards is indicated or is it indicated on, on, on those maps? Yeah, there is bollards shown there on some of the, the drawings. I don't have the exact section number in front of me, but just I suppose, where the width of the cycleway um, is below 1.8 metres. And we have no kind of grass verge with the carriage bay. We will, we are obliged, and again, that's in that detail is in the National Cycling Manual outlines that we will provide a kind of bollard curb detail to delineate the cycleway from the carriage bay. So I think it, it primarily uh, applies to the section of Park Road between the Hegarty Junction and Daly's. Um, there might be a, a very short piece just on the town side of the Hegarty Junction, but again, as you go along by Arch and we there, uh, again, we, we have the opportunity of pushing in the road as you come into town on the left hand side. To make sure we have a minimum weight of 1.8 meter cycle lanes. And again, that will then, uh, I suppose, remove the need to provide ballads. And um, having said that, there were seen in numerous places that uh, even at 1.8 meters, we can still uh, to, to put in we can still put in a ballard curb detail, uh, which again will further, I suppose, enhance the safety of cyclists using these cycle lanes. Okay, there's a, a question here: Is is there any plan to use Dutch style roundabouts uh, in the plan? Uh, that the roundabouts, in this uh, person's opinion, are one of the most dangerous uh, elements to a, a cycle commute. Um, so, is, is there any plan to introduce such style roundabouts? Yeah, I suppose just the only roundabout we're really dealing with is the one again at Hegarty's. And at the moment, uh, I suppose due to the, you know, the judge size, I'm aware vaguely of okay, but it is really about reducing the roundabouts to a single lane entry. Um, uh, but because due to I suppose, the current traffic restrictions, uh, our proposal at the moment is we just do the slight, the, the sites will divert onto County Road and Deer Park Road and we'll, con, con, we'll cross them roads by means of a control crossing. So we just have to balance here, you know, traffic flows of the town uh, with the need for, 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 for site lanes. Um, but I think with, the, with, with that exception, all the other junctions fully comply with the National Cycling Manual. And as I said before, you know, the other projects that we can deliver here regarding um, if the outer bypass or even uh, the link from the Deer Park area northward. Uh, if the projects can roll on, then we can definitely go back and uh, re-examine that junction. But again, um, I, I encourage the person that made, raised the question to make a submission, and we will re-examine every one of these options again in the context of, of the national standards. And if we can do further to improve uh, safety and, and, and give more priority to cyclists, we will consider that as part of the, the revisions and re-examine all the submissions when they come in.
Very good. There, there, there are a, a, a still a significant volume of questions coming in, so it, it, please, if, if anyone has put a question in uh, and we don't get around to answering it, we, we, we'll try and certainly uh, make sure that David and the team uh, will have access to all the questions uh, and that you know that you'll, you'll get an opportunity to have an answer. Um, where you have registered, we, we'll possibly be able to come back directly uh, to the person who's asked the question. Uh, would maybe a more specific answer in some of those cases. So um, I, I just drive on with the ones that I think are, are more generic uh, and that cover a few issues. So again, a lot of very good feedback in relation to the webinar, uh, David, uh, and to the presentation and to the, the, the underlying concepts of the project uh, and that it's going to be a great uh, asset to the town and to the sustainability of Killarney. Um, there's a, a question here in relation to bollards again, which we've just been talking about, I suppose, in, in one occasion. Uh, but in relation to... Um, the uh, column strip, I think it's in, um, just get the location now. Um, so I know the cyclists are protected by bollards in most places. One of the cycle lanes in phase one on Rock Road is the location, is not protected by bollards. The plan shows a 500 millimeter wide cobbled strip. What is going to be done to stop cars parking there? They park here every day uh, and the image in the related PDF document even shows a car parked on the footpath. Um, and the second question relates, uh, why not divert around the other side of the grotto? Uh, this is one of the pinch points you showed on the map earlier on, as it's problematic to have a shared place here. Cars always park here, going to football matches, etc. So I suppose two issues there, one of parking and a suggestion mm -hmm. that the bike lane uh, will be brought around the other side of the grotto. Yeah. Um, just a bottom, I suppose, on, on, on the park issue, I think I addressed, addressed that already again. Um, look, the, on the, the northern side of, uh, of Rock Road, we, um, again, we have a 1.8 metre width cadre, and we did consider putting the green strip there, but there are significant amount of entrances along that section of road. So it is not feasible to uh, have, have green strips broken by every entrance along there. So that's why the cobble detail is shown there again. Um, and again, look, it, 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 it's, it's something that we, we, that we will, again, if a submission comes in this, we will finalise it, but there will be a cobble and a curve difference there. And um, we could look at um, just taking out that cobble strip and, you know, look, look, I suppose what, what's proposed between the cobble strip is to create an extra distance between the cadre and the footpath. Uh, and again, because of the interest there, we couldn't have a green strip there. So uh, it's something, again, look, if, if the person feels strongly about it, make a submission and we will consider it uh, with the possibility of avoiding the cycleway out to the, out to, in, to, to include that cobbleway in the cycleway. But um, again, there is a curve difference there. Regarding the party, again, look, at I think I addressed that already. We will be down to you know people's um, respect for all road users. It's really part of the cycleway within that cycleway then is is no longer used to people. Um, so look, it will come down to we we'll expect people to hopefully uphold the law. It, it, you can you can only park in a designated parking space. You should not be parking in a cycle lane. And between Kerry County Council and Garda Shikan, we will have a force imposed to to, to put, ensure that's in place. Regarding the section of the grotto, and we did give consideration to this during the design stage. Um, but we felt just as people heading north south along Rock Road that if we were to divert back around, around the back of the grotto, which we could have done, and we still can do, by the way, uh, but we just feel that people will not use it. The people will still continue north south there. Uh, while it is a 30 metre or 35 metre section of combined footpad, it is still three metres wide. Um, so again, again, somebody can make a submission and we will re examine that proposal. Um, and I won't rule out for definite, but we just felt that south is. For that short distance, wouldn't divert around the back of the grotto and come back on again to the, 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 the cycleway and the carriageway, again, north of the, the grotto junction. Okay, thanks very much, Raph. I know, David, from, from the work that I do with the Joint Policing Committee and Kerry, certainly this issue of parking and bike lanes and the enforcement of that has come up uh, at a number of those meetings. And there is a commitment there from Ogarda Shiakana. Uh, and from Kerry County Council uh, in relation to ensuring that the bike lanes uh, using the traffic enforcement measures uh, that they will be uh, adequately pleased and prioritised accordingly. Um, so I think we do have the, the support of the Gardaí towards the bigger picture there uh, and indeed our own traffic wardens. Um, so yeah. I just want to move on a little bit again. Some very just positive to point, just wait again, I suppose we much prefer if we don't have to be enforcing this. Again, I just want to re-emphasise this is really about respecting all road users uh, and everyone will have a designated space on the road, be it on the carriageway, on the cycleway, on the footpath. I think that's the key point. And you know, as we develop these projects, that you know, that's something we we'll, we'll probably do a public information campaign on again, just to encourage people to respect other road users and not to cycle on footpaths and not to cycle on cycleways. Very good. That's a very, very well made point. There's a, there's a question here uh, or a comment in in relation to I suppose the experiences of other countries. Um, and you know, was there research done 
in the likes of Belgium, De uh, Denmark, the Netherlands, and Sweden, who have world class cycle infrastructure. Um, but they, uh, their, their comment is, 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 is very favourable uh, and again raising the point that the connectivity for cycle lanes at the roundabout is going to be a big challenge so uh, can, can it please be addressed yeah. most properly so uh, that, that topic has come up on a number of occasions and you have said that there will be some particular design challenges around roundabouts uh, going forward yeah well again by just yeah, the start right. was just just when all around what's on, on, on the Clary bypass they are being dealt with as a separate project and um again the bypass is a very busy road again but all the junctions there will be assessed separately and so there, there will be a, a, a separate project that will look at all these and i'm sure that the learnings from the european countries will be considered in the design solutions for these roundabouts okay, there's two questions here that don't relate specifically to the bike lanes i suppose but to the people who will be using them uh, and they're both around parking so one is in relation to will there be more bike parking uh, in the town and the second one I suppose at the other end of the journey for people who like to park and ride is will there be parking facilities at the start at the entrance if you like uh, of these bike lanes that are going to bring people into the town centre in a, an environmentally sound way. Yeah. I'd love to think that if we can roll out this project and, and further cycle lanes that, that we, we, we will be in that position down the line. I suppose the significant amount of, of bicycle parking has been provided in the town over the last couple of years. Um, people will be aware of, of bicycle, uh, the bicycle parking stands in the town centre. We have bicycle bays in, in the car parks. And again, we, we have absolutely, um, you know, if the demand for cycling, uh, bicycle parking grows like we'd like it to grow, absolutely there will be additional cycling and covered uh, cycling bays provided primarily in the car parks and further in the town centre. Regarding the park and ride facility, I suppose um, I know it's something that came up uh, before through the MD and, and from through the town council about that we should look at that is kind of idea that people come to the approaches to Kalani with park and that you get a bus or cycling in the town. Um, again, I suppose this project really is about putting the cycle lanes along the main arteries. Um, it's something that I wouldn't roll out in the future. Um, it is the, you know something that has been used. I know in new European models. And um, while we've no specific plan for it at the moment, again, if we can deliver the cycle lanes along these men after, after he's coming to the town, then it will make provision for that. Uh, you know, if we want to do that down the line, provide a, you know, out-of-town parking, collectible cycling, they, they encourage people to cycle in town, this project will align with that, with that objective. But at the moment, we have no specific plans to provide, you know, you know park and ride facilities to allow people to, to cycle in the town. Very good. There, there was a question there earlier on which I actually skipped over and meant to come back to uh, and it related to uh, somebody who was pointing out one of the issues uh, on the current uh, cycle paths um, and the uh, example they gave was up around Corbyns and uh, Dailies where the cycle lane is inside the footpath and for people to transition back onto the carriageway the cyclists have to cut across what's effectively a pedestrian space I presume, for the, for the most part, based on what you've gone through here tonight, uh, there is better uh, avoidance of cyclists and uh, pedestrians uh, meeting in that kind of circumstance. Yeah, in that area, I know it was marked on the ground there, and, and the, the question is right. It is the cyclist should be beside the traffic. So, uh, as part of the scheme here, where we are tying into that cycle, that existing cycle along by the the, the, the Farmer Ryan's Hotel there. The cycle lane will be uh, clearly delineated on, on the traffic side and, and, and the, the pedestrian area on the inside will be marked clearly pedestrian. So that issue, uh, that section of existing cycle or combined footpath cycle will be amended as part of this project. Okay, very good. There's some uh, questions in relation to, I suppose, the, the use of the proposed use of uh, some of that green space in front of our um and the, the, the bringing of a lane there. Um, uh, parallel to the main road on, on Park Road uh, and I suppose in, in one case it's uh, the, the general point is that it's a shame that it's taking away from a recreational space uh, and, and other people are obviously uh, welcoming the, the continuity of uh, the cycle lane but I presume you obviously want to avoid taking away recreational spaces where, where it's possible and you're simply constrained there by the amount of road space in question, is that right? Yeah, we are. So the bigger key issue there was, I suppose, at every opportunity we were trying to link with our cycle lanes, with, with, with residential developments, and as much as possible to move them as far as away, as far away from the carriageway as possible. And just that section along by Archon of Oli, along Park Road, again, Park Road being an extremely busy road, we felt it was the best solution was to put the cycle way as you head out of town, just behind the trees along the front of Archon of Oli. And I, I take your point, it is reducing the amount of recreational space available. Um, but I suppose just from a cyclist's point of view, we just felt that, that you know, this was definitely the best option to do. Again, that person makes, can make a submission and we will give it consideration if we can come up with a, with, with a solution. 
well facilitating cyclists and uh, minimizing the disturbance that recreation area will definitely give it consideration uh, once the, the, the after the 17th of February when we go through the, all the submissions. Uh, very good. A question in relation to lighting, David. Will these cycle lanes need new lighting, and will they be well illuminated? Yeah, they will. Uh, simple answer: the the, the 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 cycle lanes will be lit in accordance with the relevant standards, and where there is increased or improved lighting required, that will be provided as part of the project. Again, the provision of public lighting um, isn't something that we require. That includes the Part Eight process, but uh, rest assured that all the lighting will be updated as required. To I mean, the lighting at the moment covers the existing footpaths and roadways. And if we're wide in these areas, then the increased lighting will have to be, will have to be provided. Okay, but, uh, I suppose somebody raising a practical point here uh, and describing an existing issue. Uh, where do cyclists who are coming down the two lanes on Rock Road and St. Anne's Road, uh, when they come to High Street uh, to access the town centre, where do they go? At the moment, there's a lot of cyclists cycling down High Street, and by that I presume they mean going against the, the one-way traffic system that's there. Or using the footpaths to access the town centre. So, will there be a change to, to the use of High Street, maybe with a cycle lane coming into the town centre, or is there another route uh, for the cyclists? Well, I suppose going again, just if we go back to the, on the screen there again, the town centre of Canary will we, we, we'll go through a separate process, which is a public well improvement plan. And again, uh, I, I know exist, I've been brought my attention with that issue where, where people do cycle down uh, against the one way traffic. So um, again, we have no specific plan deal for that. It will be covered as part of the public realm plan for town centre. And if, if we feel there is a need to bring cyclists down to, down on High Street, uh, that will have to be brought into the design considerations for the public realm improvements of High Street. But at, the, at this point, that, that project is only at the very early stage, and um, that issue, uh, while it's not directly related to this project, will, will be taken into consideration in the public realm plan for Kalani, for High Street in Kalani. Very good. Again, some 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 comments in relation to, to the parking and, and where the bikes going to go. And I know certainly uh, some of the schools in the town have put uh, some tremendous covered cycling um, bays into the schools. Um, and there has been a development which we've seen around town with those very well branded uh, secure bike parking areas. Um, but is there a, a, a plan, somebody's asking here, uh, to provide secure uh, U-Hoop Sheffield stands and covered bike parking areas so that bikes can be securely locked? Yeah, I suppose again in, in this plan we, ha we haven't covered the, the bicycle parking, but again, what I say is if if the need for additional parking um, is, is identified once we've completed this project, we certainly will provide additional parking and the types of parking that, that you reference. Again, look, we will look out which are the best ones available, and they will all be considered. But again, look, the provision of bicycle parking is separate from this. This is primarily providing side side lanes along the main approach roads to Canary um, to re kick off people cycling, but I take the point, you know, maybe as part of the overall strategy for the town, we will examine locations of where the, that bicycle parking can be provided. Okay, again, some 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 great positive feedback coming in, David, so uh, you're on a roll, but we try and wrap things up, because we, we, we've been on for quite quite a while, um, and as I said, we, we maybe turn back to some of the people whose questions we couldn't answer here on the night, but there is a question here, or a couple of questions that relate to the topic of, you know, is there going to be a requirement maybe to, to demolish walls or change uh, 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 cut through property. Is is there anything uh, in relation to, to walls uh, in particular or gardens that might need to be changed? Yeah, as, was, as part of this project, we, we did try to minimise um, you know the, 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 the length it required, and we tried to fit the, the site lanes with the with the, the narrow the cadre within the existing road across sections. Well, the, there are a number of sections of road uh, along, particularly on Upper Loose Road, along with the Fitzgerald Stadium, and there's a number of properties just south of that. Where we will have to, um, I suppose, set back their front boundary walls to facilitate these cycle lanes. Again, um, look, we've gone through plans across at the moment. We will then have to, if this is, you know, if, if we can successfully get, get this get, get kind of approval in place for this project, we would then be looking for funding through the NTA to fund the project. And it's only at that stage when we have a, you know planning and a funding program in place that they can go back out. And, and I don't know maybe the specific details regarding land acquisition. But uh, anywhere we are proposing to, to, to acquire land, all the existing boundaries walls will be set back to match existing. And if there's a you know compensation required for the land in, in, in question, well, then that will be agreed. Uh, but the detailed consideration can only be considered after planning approval is in place and after we've identified a funding source for the project. Very good. Uh, somebody's asked a question, and it's more for, more for me. Uh, are these questions being screened? Is there anybody who's against these plans? Uh, the, the questions are being screened in the sense that I'm trying to get through a lot of them in a, in a short period of time, uh, but I'm trying to reflect absolutely the, the, the vibe that's coming through from people's questions uh, and where people have uh, concerns in relation to 
individual or particular design aspects, we'd strongly encourage you uh, to use your opportunity to participate in the process uh, and to um, to use uh, your voice and to have your say uh, and to use the, uh, the, the the mechanism that's being provided where you can, you can make an observation without any charge. You can do it by email or you can do it in the post uh, to Kerry County Council as long as that's in by, I think it's the 17th day, but is that right? 17th of February. 17th of February. So they can come in by, by post or by email or roads.kerrycoco.ie and all submissions will be considered and will, will be prepared, uh, a report will be prepared on all submissions and brought before the members for their consideration. Very good. And again, David, just a, a lot of very positive feedback for yourself in terms of the, the material that you've covered here tonight. Uh, and I'd like to, to uh, piggyback on top of that. It's been a very good presentation. It's been very informative for people. It's a very ambitious project. Uh, it will certainly leave us with a better, safer and more sustainable town uh, when it's delivered. So, so the very best of luck uh, and certainly the more, uh, I suppose, contributions you get through that consultation process, David, the better the scheme will be. So you're, you're very much an advocate for people using their, their democratic uh, right to engage with us on the design of these schemes. Isn't that correct? Yeah, absolutely, Brian. And, and I absolutely encourage every single person to make a submission. Uh, you know, we're all human beings. Maybe there's, there's better ways of, uh, of improving our, our project proposals. And if you make submissions, we will consider every, every single one of them and we'll make amendments where necessary if, they're, if, they're, if we didn't valid. And we will include them in, in our recommendations going to the, the MD meeting in Kerry. So we very much welcome all the submissions and um, provided when every single one of them will be considered. Okay, Dave, thank you very much. You've given us a lot of time tonight. I'm just going to bring in the uh, Municipal District Manager, Angela McCallum. Uh, Angela, if you're available to come in, maybe you can put this particular development in the context of other developments uh, and maybe help to wrap things up for us. So over to you, Angela. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Brian. Thank you, David. And thank you, uh, look, uh, Brendan. Um, look, I'd like to thank you, um, everybody uh, attending uh, this webinar tonight. It's wonderful to see such uh, big numbers. Thank you for your feedback, for your observations, uh, for your questions. Um, and I do hope that we've answered some of the questions. I appreciate that probably not all questions have been answered tonight. And I suppose that's where I would um, echo the, um, the sentiments of both David, Brian and Brendan in relation to, I suppose, making um, submissions in relation to this be an active part of the consultation process. Um, this project is a transformative um, project, we have no doubt about that, and I suppose we will have bumps along the way in relation to its development. Um, it is part of a greater plan for Killarney. Um, it's one of a number of projects um, at various stages um, aiming to improve linkages throughout the town between residential areas and the town centre through our national park. Uh, it's also about the other projects in relation to improvement of our streetscapes, development of greater accessibility for all, and providing public realm improvements as part of that for the town over the next number of years. So I suppose if I'd, I'd encourage you, if you have any other further questions, as David has said, to contact both himself or Maria Nikalik, um, and as well to make submissions, and just to note that the closing date um, for them, as uh, David would have said, um, is the 17th of February. And thank you once again um, for your participation. We do appreciate it. Thank you. I'll just pass it to Brian to close down. Thank you. Thanks, Angela. And again, thanks to people for, for joining us. Most people have stayed with us for the whole session, which is uh, tremendous at this time of the evening, on a busy evening. So again, um, my sincere thanks to David Doyle for walking us through that presentation. Uh, to Angela for wrapping up in the context of, of bigger developments that are happening in town uh, and to our career lock here in Clarity, uh, Councillor Brendan Cronin uh, for his words of apology and his uh, putting in context the particular scheme. Again, please do, as David said earlier on, use your opportunity uh, to engage with us through the Part 8 consultation process by, by having your say. Uh, send that email with those observations or comments that you have. Uh, or write to us in the traditional posts. All the details are on the website. Thanks again for your time uh, and your attendance. And please do provide us uh, any feedback to help these webinars run uh, more smoothly in the future. Thank you. Ihoa. Slán.